Members, the next two motions are to approve statutory rules relating to child support. There will be a single debate on both motions. I will ask the clerk to read the first motion and then uh, on, the first, on the minister to approve it, and then call the minister to approve it. The minister will then commence the debate on both motions. When all who wish to speak have done so, I shall put the question on the first motion. The second motion will then be read into the record and I will call the Minister to move it. The question will then be put on that motion. If that is clear, we shall proceed. Clerk, please read the motion. That the Child Support Miscellaneous Amendments No. 3 Regulations, Northern Ireland 2019 be approved. I call the Minister to formally move the motion. To move. Thank you, Minister. The Business Committee has agreed that there will be no time uh, limit on this debate, and I call the Minister to open the debate on both motions. Thanks very much. And I suppose these regulations um, have enabled my department to make amendments to the child maintenance legislation to deliver the child maintenance compliance and arrear strategy. And perhaps I could first begin by setting out the background to that strategy, and then I should detail uh, the regulations. In November 2017, my department was included in a consultation by the Department of Work and Pensions on the proposed child maintenance compliance and arrear strategy, uh, which also included England, Scotland and Wales. And the approach taken um, has been to ensure people are being treated equally um, across those areas. The objectives of the strategy were to continue to prioritise resources uh, to benefit children of today, to continue to encourage parents and collaborate over their child maintenance arrangements where they can, and this is in the best interest of their children. To continue to minimise the child maintenance arrears being occurred um, and further improve compliance through changes to child maintenance calculations. Strengthen collection powers across the child maintenance schemes and address the historic arrears that have built up under the former child maintenance legacy schemes and um, avoid uh, government funding high cost attempts to recover historic arrears, which would in fact result in no additional money going to children. Following the conclusion of the consultation and having undertaken an analysis of the responses received, work began on taking forward the required legislative changes to successfully implement the compliance and arrears strategy. There are two packages of regulations which I will outline separately. The first package of regulations I shall outline um, are in the miscellaneous number three regulations. And these were introduced a number of changes to child maintenance legislation. The changes include improving how child maintenance liabilities are calculated, increasing the range of collection and enforcement powers to help collect more money for children and addressing historic arrears that built up under the 1993 and 2003 child support legacy schemes. These changes also help prevent non-resident parents with complex financial arrangements from artificially lowering their child maintenance liability. The regulations also close loopholes that currently exist by introducing new provisions for orders. The orders enable regular or lump sum deductions to be made from joint sole trader and unlimited partnership accounts. Powers are in introduced to allow the arrears which occurred under the 93 and 2003 legacy scheme to be written off in certain circumstances. These powers allow my department to give certainty over its approach to the arrears. In terms of the uh, child maintenance calculation and amendments, the regulations introduce a power for child maintenance service to determine a notional income from assets held by a non-resident parent. This helps ensure that child maintenance calculations result in non-resident parents paying an amount um, that more accurately reflects their means. The notional income shall be calculated at 8% of a confirmed asset's total value and where the asset uh, value exceeds £31,250. You may wish to note that protections have been included to ensure that the use of these powers uh, is proportionate. This would include certain circumstances such as when the asset is used for business purposes or is the primary home of the parent or, or a child. 
Deductions from the joint and unlimited partnership accounts. These regulations extend existing powers to apply regular and lump sum deductions orders uh, to joint and unlimited partnership bank accounts and use lump sum deductions uh, orders on sole trader accounts. Again, my department has ensured that the adequate safeguards are in place to protect the interests of other account holders. In regards to the historic arrears from 1993 to 2003, the regulations extend my department's write-off powers to enable arrears of up to £57.9 million that had built up under the 1993 to 2003 legacy schemes to be addressed and set out the circumstances in which uh, these powers can be exercised. Members may wish to note that the arrears relate to legacy child maintenance scheme cases, which could be more than 20 years old and where the children are now adults. It is also likely that the arrears balance was not an accurate one due to the penalty assessments and inaccurate um, or out-of-date calculations at that time. A high proportion of the arrears are now deemed uncollectible, and attempting to collect the arrears is now deemed not cost-effective. It should also be noted that it was an estimated of more than 50 per cent of the arrears was due to the Department, therefore would not benefit families. Where the arrears value is £65, the regulations enable the arrears to be written off without notice uh, to either parent. This is in line with current threshold uh, used in my department for debts owned to government. If a case has debt subject um, to uh, sorry, Scottish insolvency, these regulations will enable the debt to be written off um, when that expires. A parent with CUR uh, will be able to make a representation to my department if they would like an attempt to collect the arrears uh, were the case started on or before the 1st of November 2008 and the arrears are more than £1,000. The case started after the 1st of November 2008 and the arrears are more than £500. Or the arrears occurred under the 93 to 2003 legacy scheme case which was transferred to the new 2012 child maintenance system, and the debt is more than £500. Where no representations are received or collection of the arrears is not possible, my department may exercise the power to write off the debt. The regulations also enable legacy child maintenance arrears to be written off without seeking representations from parents with CUR. Where there has not been a payment in the last three months, and the case started on or before November 2008, and the arrears are less than or equal to £1,000. The case uh, started after the 1st of November, and the arrears are less than equal of £500, or the arrears occurred under the 1993-2003 scheme, which have transferred to CMS system, and the debt arrears are less or equal to £500. Those amounts were selected and as deemed not cost affected to attempt collection on individual arrears of less than 500 or arrears of less than 1,000 where the case is more than 10 years old. Members may wish to note that it would cost an average of between 500 to 1,000 pounds to investigate such cases and take in any further actions. Given the background and historical aspect of the legacy cases, it was deemed highly unlikely that the arrears would never be recovered. To date, my department has addressed arrears of almost 10,000 cases with an arrears value of £27 million, through the process that I have just outlined to members. Package 2, I shall now outline the second package, uh, Miscellaneous Amendments 4. The purpose of these regulations are to introduce changes to legislation, introducing remaining compliance powers, namely broadening the range of benefits from which arrears of child maintenance can be deducted, expanding the list of persons from whom relevant information can be requested from by my department, existing write-off powers to extinguish debt where a protected trustee has been granted to a parent and has expired, and making a minor and technical change to the child uh, maintenance calculation and fees regulations. In terms of the deductions from benefit, these regulations increase the amount uh, of maintenance that can be deducted from benefits towards uh, arrears to eight forty. It's seven pound, and then the one forty uh, collection fee, and that is uh, twenty percent in terms of the overall amount. This now aligns with the amount my department can already deduct from benefits for ongoing maintenance. 
extended deductions for arrears to all benefits from which my department can deduct ongoing maintenance, prevent arrears from being deducted at the same time as deductions towards ongoing maintenance. The maximum amount that can be deducted at any one time is always £8.40. And to enable deductions for ongoing maintenance and arrears from universal credit, where the non-resident parent has earnings and meets the criteria for the flat rate maintenance calculation. You may also wish to note that my department could already deduct for ongoing maintenance from universal credit where the non-resident parent has no earnings and meets the criteria for the flat rate maintenance calculation. In terms of protected trust deeds, the regulations extend the write-off powers to enable the department to write-off related to the Scottish protected trust deed which is legally um, uncollectible as a result of this process. Information regulations. These regulations extend to the list of organisations which must provide information to my department. They include mortgage lenders and occupational pension providers. You may wish to note that these organisations previously had to comply with such a request, but it had to be carried out by an inspector physically um, visiting the premises. And further technical amendments. The regulations also make further technical amendments to change the way that the Department calculates child maintenance liabilities for apparent claiming expenses. The wording of the Child Maintenance Support Fee Regulations NI 2014 to clarify and maintain the policy intent and that any arrears occurred on uh, collect and pay or on direct pay, which is uh, moved into collect and pay service, Includes, includes collection of fees and that these fees are enforceable. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, with these packages of regulations, they build on the previous work in terms of widening enforcement powers and closing down loopholes. They also commit to tackling the historic arrears which represent the child maintenance legacy schemes that the Department shall do so in a way that best balances the interests of parents and the public funding. And finally, the Department uh, will further develop collection measures and information gathering powers. These measures will help make child maintenance fairer for all parents and ensuring that we fully deliver on the commitments of the compliance and arrear strategy. Uh, I beg to move. I now call Paula Bradley, Chair of the Committee for Communities. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The committee considered these regulations at its meeting of the 6th of February. The Child Support Miscellaneous Amendment No. 3 Regulations NI 2019 will revoke and reenact the provisions of the Child Support Miscellaneous, Amendment, Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations Northern Ireland 2018. The regulations provide for powers which were introduced in December 2018 to continue in force. Its main purpose is to improve how child maintenance liabilities are calculated, increase the range of collection and enforcement powers to help collect more money for children and to address historic arrears that have built up under the legacy schemes. I am glad to see this issue being brought forward, as I understand for many parents, arrears on child ma maintenance can be damaging two relationships between resident and non-resident parents, which then has a knock-on effect on their children. The Child Support Miscellaneous Amendment No. 4 Regulations, NI 2019, would introduce a number of changes to child maintenance legislation. The rule will change the range of benefits from which arrears of child maintenance can be taken and expand the list of persons to whom the Department can write to and request information be provided. The regulations also provide for child maintenance debt that was subject to a protected trust date that has expired without being converted to bankruptcy and make minor and technical changes to the child maintenance calculation and fees regulations. The committee recommends that both of these regulations be approved by the Assembly. I call Sinead Innes. Okay. Uh, I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much. Um, Deputy Speaker, I agree absolutely with the Chair of the Committee. Um, the, the Committee has already seen this um, and has considered part of it. 
The one thing I would just like to ask the Minister if she could confirm for me, um, while I have absolutely no problem with arrears um, being dealt with in this way, it looks like common sense, and to be honest, arrears can create emotional difficulties between partners who are no longer together um, and just leads to years of, of problems. Um, where I would like to draw attention to is just for clarification, and it's, it's more for clarification um, in this public domain. Uh, when, when we look in Regulation 3, about the joint and unlimited partnership accounts, I have a, a slight concern about how the amount is calculated. Um, is there any consideration taken into account of the non-resident partner's own children and whether or not the deductions that are being taken from that non-resident partner's future or other children that they have um, is considered in a way that doesn't leave them living in poverty. Um, I appreciate completely that um, ensuring that the, the, ch the child of parents who are no longer together um, must um, have child maintenance payments made, but I'm, I've always been concerned about the second family. If if that family um, is taken into consideration when the calculations are worked out. Thank you. No other members have indicated they wish to speak, so I call the Minister to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. The Chair of the Committee um, for their uh, words. Also, just to respond um, to yourself, obviously these are considered in terms of when those deductions um, are being looked at. And obviously, this is dealing with legacy debt, which is over 20 years old. And part of the calculations, as well, as I said, were based on estimates. So even that it doesn't really reflect what maybe the true income at that time uh, was, as well. And so most of those probably will be written off in that context, also. Um, again, obviously, I just want to um, thank members um, just for their consideration of this. Um, and I know it is uh, quite technical and long. It's obviously dealing with uh, legacy um, issues and debt. But again, I suppose I just uh, commend this to this House. Members, the question is that the Child Support Miscellaneous Amendment No. 3 Regulations Northern Ireland 2019 be approved. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. We will now move to the motion on the Child Support Miscellaneous Amendments No. 4, Regulations Northern Ireland 2019, which has already been debated. And I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That the Child Support Miscellaneous Amendments No. 4, Regulations Northern Ireland 2019, be approved. And I now call the Minister for Communities to move the motion. I beg to move. The question has already been debated. So the question is that the Child Support Miscellaneous Amendments No. 4, Regulations Northern Ireland 2019, be approved. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item in the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the Pension Schemes Bill 